All right, guys, we are back, and um, I don't know if I'm fully able to address the technical issues, but what I'll do is I'll just wait for you guys to tell me that it is unacceptably low quality and we cannot proceed, okay? And you have the messages to uh, get that across to me, but uh, we will continue. So we were comparing the different types of microscopes just as a recap from the previous session. Um, and so what we had was we discussed the different types of illumination of the different microscopes. Um, and then uh, we're next going to compare the different types of sample preparation. So with the light microscope, the sample preparation is the simplest. Remember that we discussed um, the different types of slides you could prepare. And uh, we also discussed the different types of uh, differential stains that you could use and what the, what the purpose of the differential stains are. Okay. Um, next, we looked at the transmission electron microscopes, the fact that um, the conditions needed to get such high resolution and high magnification images, the, the conditions needed to achieve that are so extreme that the samples have to go through a pretty um, complex preparation procedure. Uh, samples are have to be dead at the time uh, that you put them in the electron microscope. So um, because of the conditions that you're using, it is going to result in some kind of distortion. So you get high quality images, but you're going to have to take into account that um, there might be some distortion from what that uh, stuff looked like while it was living. Next, with the um, next with the uh, light, uh, the confocal microscope, the samples have to be pre-labeled with a fluorescent marker that's uh, being excited by the laser and giving off the signal. Everything else uh, you don't see. So you don't see, generally speaking, you don't see all the other stuff that's in the cell. You're only seeing the stuff that's emitting a fluorescent signal which you are detecting. So um, that's the information that you get from there. Uh, next, then, magnification. Now, these should all be taken with a pinch of salt. But depending on the source that you use, you're going to see different numbers. So it might be better just to be able to relatively compare these different uh, magnifications. So at the lowest magnification, we have in the scale of a thousand times. So you might see 500, you might see 2000, but we're in the ballpark of 1000 times magnification. With the electron microscope, it is much, much higher magnification for the reasons we've discussed. But generally speaking, the transmission electron microscope is much, much higher. That's in fact the highest magnification that you can get. Slightly lower than that is the scanning electron uh, microscopy. Okay, And then, I haven't been able to find specific numbers on this, but because the confocal microscope uses the same technology as the light microscope, we're going to say that the magnification possible from the confocal is the same as the light microscope. Now, if you guys have found anything different, you have information on this that I don't have access to, then uh, please get in touch with me and let me know. Um, resolution then. So again, resolution between the light microscope and the confocal microscope is going to be similar, even though we've discussed that um, in terms of resolution, the confocal microscope can be slightly higher because it's not uh, getting information from different focal planes, um, but they are in the order of 200 nanometers because ultimately they are relying on visible light for the detection. Because electron microscopes, because electrons have lower wavelengths, um, we, we are going to get to magnification, uh, Yuki. Um, image over actual, all right, so you, you guys are helping each other out there, that's great. Um, but we will we will be looking at that. Um, now, with the resolution of the electron microscopes, because electrons have that shorter wavelengths, the the resolution can be much higher. 
In fact, again, the transmission electron microscope has the highest in inverted comma resolution. Um, it's got the shortest distance that it can discriminate between. Um, the scanning electron microscope has also a high resolution, but not as high as the transmission electron microscope. Finally, in terms of practicality, we have uh, the light microscope being the most practical, most uh, inexpensive and portable, whereas confocal microscopes can be quite large because you need these big units to generate the lasers. Um, and you also have uh, the electron microscopes, which uh, are quite big and bulky, expensive to maintain and use. Okay, so that's just a recap of that yesterday. Ideally, I would have had some images here to show you what the images of each look like, but um, you, you have access to my slides via the description, so you can um, have a look at that uh, for yourself. Is there any resolution formula? No, for A-level biology, there is no formula that you need uh, for resolution. Okay, but there, is, there are relationships about resolution to do with the wavelengths. So I believe whatever the wavelength is, the resolution of that microscope should be half of that wavelength, I think, something like that. Um, right then, let's move on to magnification. So in relation to magnification, this is an image that I used yesterday. Basically, I need to stop using basically, but you have the, act, you have the object, the actual thing that you're looking at, okay? And this terminology is important because um, it's, it's going to have impact on calculations, etc. moving forward. So you have the actual object that you're looking at. In this case, we're looking at a ladybird. But once the microscope does all the refraction of the light that's coming off the ladybird, being reflected off or transmitting through, whatever, um, once the microscope refracts those light rays, they are bent. The angle of those light rays is bent, and so we view a magnified version of that image. So we are going to refer to that as the magnified image. Okay, so I know there's lots of different interpretations of the word actual, like this is the thing that I'm actually looking at, but um, we got to stick to this uh, nomenclature and we got to stick to what it means as well. Um, so that's the actual and the image is the magnified thing. Okay, and the, and the microscope through the objective lens is what causes the magnification that allows us to view the actual magnified. Okay, so this is really important and this is independent of the microscope technology so i hope that that all makes sense so we have an actual object it's viewed through the microscope which magnifies it giving us an image that is bigger okay now this the the next thing that we're going to move on to is the mathematics of this so What's, what is that relationship? So the relationship, now I have been teaching this for many years and it is always a thing that causes a lot of difficulty. So I'm always trying different ways to do this. Now I wonder if by calling it a simply a ratio, simply like a percentage change. So you have, you know, with percentage we have the original and we have the new. And in uh, microscopy, we have the actual and we have the image. Okay, now you can think of the magnification as simply the ratio between the two things. Um, and that's, that's the easiest way that I, I can put it. So you have whatever the image is, is going to be much bigger. Okay, so the image is going to be a quite a large thing. The actual is quite smaller. So, if you divide the image value by the actual value, you should get how many times the image is bigger than the actual, and that should be the magnification. And they are put together in this triangle. Okay? So, the way we get, so the way we get to magnification is by dividing 
the image. The image divided by the actual should give us the magnification. The image divided by the magnification should give us the actual. I hope we're appreciating these relationships. And the actual multiplied by the magnification should give us the image. These are the three relationships. You can memorize those three if you want to, but if you understand this, and this is a kind of um, this is a kind of rule for biology generally, that if you understand things and why they work, you're you're giving your brain less memorizing to do. Because it's, it's making a little bit more sense. It's a bit more glue holding all the facts together. Okay, so there we have it. That's that equation. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do, and we are going to look at some examples of this later on. Um, but the key thing about the magnification is the units. So this is the place where a lot of errors and um, slip ups can happen. Um, and uh, it is useful to be able to appreciate the scales that we are working at. Um, and so units, our units of measurement become very important because the things, it would be very convenient if all of biology just took place in one area of this scale, but unfortunately it doesn't. So we do look at things that are as small as on the scale of nanometers. Um, cells then, which are on the scale of micrometers. And we might even then look at things which are in, in the scale of millimeters and centimeters, which might be tissues. And, and further than that, it might even be organisms. Okay. So it is very important for us to be able to move through these units because the thing about this is that, and, and this is the important rule, is that you, even if you understand this um, relationship, you must always, I'm going to write this down in bold, always use values in the same units. So you should not be dividing centimeters by micrometers or uh, millimeters by nanometers or centimeters by millimeters. Try and convert everything into the same units. It, unless the answer asks for something specific, it really doesn't matter which units you use as long as you can reconvert back into the units that are expected of you at the end. So we have to be able to use the same units. And in order to use the same units, we have to be able to do unit conversions. So before we get into some calculations to do with um, uh, magnifications, I'm just going to make sure that we remember the basics of unit conversion. So if we start with meters, Right. Let's first remember all the units that we might possibly be asked to use. So we have meters, and within meters we have centimeters. We centimeters are made up of a certain number of millimeters. Millimeters are made up of micrometers and micrometers are made up of nanometers, and nanometers are made up of picometers, but generally speaking, I don't think that will come up. Okay, so this is what we need to be aware of in the first instance. Next, what we need to be able to do is with ease, with ease, almost blindfolded, hands tied, be tied behind our backs, we should be able to convert between these units. Okay, so remember that meters are meters have hundred centimeters. So if so, if you're converting from meters into centimeters, 
Remembering that there are many centimeters within a meter, um, you must multiply by 100 because each meter has 100 centimeters. Centimeters to millimeters multiplied by 10. Millimeters to micrometers multiply by 1,000. Micrometers to nanometers multiplying by 1,000. Okay. Um, and then going in the opposite direction, going in the opposite direction, we are more, uh, dividing by a thousand, dividing by a thousand, and so on. Okay, so I would advise you, I mean, depends on the question, obviously, but I would always advise, advise you to work in the micrometers uh, area if and when possible okay usually when you're looking at very small things we're dealing with micrometers so convert everything into the same units and then do your calculations and then at the end um, reconvert into the units that are uh, expected by the question okay so i hope that that's making sense um, remember the centimeters and millimeters are a bit non-standard, but otherwise, from meters to millimeters, and from millimeters to micrometers, from micrometers to nanometers, it is all a factor of a thousand. Okay, so we need to be comfortable with our unit conversions. Right, next, eyepiece graticule. So the eyepiece graticule is a kind of a scale, a kind of a, a ruler, if you will, that allows you to look at biological samples under the light microscope and allow you to get a, an estimate of how, what, what the size of the sample is that you're looking at. Because remember, when you're looking down the microscope, you have no frame of reference as to how big the thing is that you're looking at. Okay? Looks cool, looks interesting, but you don't have any idea of the size. And so, the, the eyepiece graticule allows you to make an estimation of that. So there's two things to understand about the eyepiece graticule. First, the graticule itself, the eyepiece part, which is this scale at the top, okay, that resides in the eyepiece as its name suggests. Okay, so that top scale is kind of printed onto the lens of the eyepiece so that when you look through, uh, whatever you look at is going to have this scale in front of it, okay, covering the picture. So, I hope you can appreciate that because that's in the eyepiece, and the objective is somewhere down here, or here, because of that, um, what the eyepiece graticule by itself gives you no measure of what you're looking at. It's just simply a way for you to give it a number, all right? It's not measuring anything by itself. What you need on the other side for you to be able to measure, uh, give this an estimate of size is something on the stage right next to your sample called the stage micrometer. So that's on the stage right there. That's at the bottom, okay? So the stage micrometer that's actual distance. That's giving you an idea of actual distance, the actual size of whatever specimen that you're viewing. Okay, so what that is, it's, a, it's essentially it's a slide with a ruler printed on it. Okay, now obviously you can't have this there at the same time as your sample. So what you do is you calibrate you calibrate your um, graticule, so you've got your objective in place. It might be a four times, it might be a ten times, it might be a forty times. So you set that in place, you look down the eyepiece with the graticule, and you can see the stage micrometer on the stage. Just get rid of some of these lines. And what it allows you to do is to see in in actual measurement terms, how much do each of the divisions on the eyepiece graticule, what distance do they actually relate to? So let's take this example. 
Let's take this example. Our IP Scratticule here, it got, it's got a hundred divisions. Okay, a hundred divisions, uh, ten large divisions, but a hundred um, minor divisions. But by themselves, they don't mean anything. So we put on the stage of the microscope, we put the stage micrometer, and the stage micrometer we know has these divisions. Okay, so we know that this means 0.2 millimeters. So this is 0.2 millimeters. And what this is telling us is at the objective that we are using in the microscope, at, at the level of magnification that we are looking at, 80 divisions on our gra eyepiece graticule is equivalent to 0.2 millimeters. Okay? And by extension, it means that each division, each division on the eyepiece graticule is going to be a distance of 0.2 millimeters divided by 80. So each division, each little division that we are looking at over here, each of these little divisions is 0.2 millimeters divided by 80. And I'll just bring out my calculator here. And that is equal to 0.2 divided by 80 is equal to 0 0.0025. 0 0.0025 millimeters. Okay. So now if I look at anything on the, on the microscope, I will know roughly, because I can see how many divisions it is, so if I'm looking at something like this, each of these things is roughly 10 divisions, so I can estimate that each of these things that I'm looking at is roughly 10 times 0 0.0025 millimeters, i.e. 0 0.025 millimeters. So it allows me to make an estimation of the things I'm looking at. Okay, so uh, for any recap of these details, just see the PowerPoint. Okay, um, but this is what I mean. Uh, the eyepiece graticule allows us to look at something down the microscope, and because we've now worked out how much each division is, we can then assign um, a distance to the things that we're looking at. And it gives us a bit of an idea of the scale of the thing um, that it is that we're looking at. Okay, so that concludes our going over of the theory. Um, now we'll just work through some questions. In the description, guys, I have put links to the questions that I'm about to use. So you have access to those. Um, so let us now move over to the questions. And here we are. Okay, so we've got a question here. Um, and I've got a little ruler here, but that's going to work. And so let's continue. So we've got an artery in this diagram, and small arteries are found linking the larger arteries with the arterioles that carry blood into the capillary beds of an organ or tissue. And the question reads, calculate the thickness of the wall of the artery uh, between the points marked A and B on the figure. Show your working and express your answer to the nearest micrometer. So we'll, we'll do that last, but we cannot forget to do that. Um, but essentially, we are calculating the thickness of the wall. And what that means is we have an image um, and we, we are really looking for the actual. We are looking for the actual. Okay, so what we've got to do is take a ruler and we've got the distance between A and B. So we're going to put the ruler in the place that measures between A and B and that is our magnified image. So this is, this is where we've got to use a little bit of brain work. We have to decide what is what. It's easy to put a ruler down and start measuring things and giving things values, but this is where we need to use our brain and assign um, values to things in our triangle. Okay, so let's just think about what we're doing here. 
All right, so let's get rid of that. So we've got our image, we have our actual, and times the magnification. Okay, now in this uh, question, we are being asked for the actual thickness of the wall. We've got a picture in front of us, it'd be easy for us to measure it, but that's not the actual size of the thing. They're asking us for that. So it's the actual that we don't have. And next, what we have to ask ourselves is, do we have the other two? And do we know what value to assign them? So uh, most straightforward is, do we have a magnification? And if I move the ruler out of the way, we can see that we have been given a magnification. So that is a check. Next, do we have the image size? And I guess that's the, re that's the distance that we have to measure with the ruler. So we've got an image size of 1.4 centimeters. Now, generally, I don't like to work with centimeters, so we're going to go with 14 millimeters. So we have 14 millimeters right there. We have our magnification, which is 120. So we can start to put things in, in the triangle, right? wrong what have we not done we have not converted our units remember we are trying to keep our units consistent and because we've been asked to keep things in micrometers we're going to do that so we're going to convert 14 uh, millimeters into micrometers and that should be a conversion factor of a thousand so we have 14 thousand micrometers right there okay uh, and the next thing that we do is we divide 14,000 micrometers. We divide it by the magnification, and that should give us the actual. And that should be calculator 14,000 divided by 120 equals 116.67, shall we say. Okay, so that is the non-magnification, that is the actual um, in micrometers. But it's asking for the nearest my, nearest whole micrometer, so that we're going to call 117 micrometers, and make sure to put it here. 117, the units are already given, so that should be that. Okay, so was that straightforward? pretty much, but remember, if you follow the steps, even if things get tricky, you'll be okay. So remember, you rely on your formula triangle, you you see what you have, you're, you're usually given two of the three, so you identify which of those you have, and please guys, do not forget to convert your units so that your calculations actually mean something. Okay, good, let's move on the next example. So figure 23 shows a microscope image of a cross-section taken from the stem of a sunflower. Helianthus annuus. Okay, calculate the magnification of the image. So calculating the magnification of this image. So if we want to calculate the magnification, we have the image, we have the actual and we have the magnification. Now, if we want the magnification, we need to divide the image value by the actual value. Okay, now do we have those things? Now, scale bars. This is a good example because it gives us a chance to talk about scale bars. Okay, um, with the scale bars, remember that they are actually a measure of actualness. Okay, Yes, they are seemingly referring to a random bit of the picture, but whatever's true for the scale bar is true for the image as a whole. And so that's your trick to this. So if, if they're telling you that in actual terms, if in actual terms that that distance represents 60 micrometers, and we know that if we put our ruler on it, it's not 60 micrometers, so 60 micrometers is actually referring to an actual distance. So in actual terms of this tissue that we can see here, um, that bit has an actual distance. 
So this bit right here has an actual distance of 60 micrometers. And that is true for the rest of the image. Okay, so you don't have to go around um, measuring the whole image. You can actually just work with the scale bar in this case. Um, so your actual is 60 micrometers. The next thing that you can do is say, right, if this, act, if this scale bar has an actual distance of 60 micrometers, then I've got my actual. Now I only need what the image is. And so for that, again, we can take our ruler and we simply measure the scale bar. Okay, we measure the scale bar and let's say that that's 2.1 centimeters quickly converted to 21 millimeters. And that is our image, ladies and gents. Okay, so 21 millimeters is therefore our image. So now we have the magnified image version. We value, we have the actual value. And we can go ahead and um, convert the magnification, right guys? Wrong. I heard you all from this great distance. Wrong. Because we forgot to convert our two distances into the same units. So proud of you all for remembering that. That was great. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to convert 21 millimeters into micrometers. Once our image and actual is, are in the same units, then only we will go ahead and calculate the magnification. So 21 millimeters to micrometers is one factor of a thousand. So 60, and so oh, that's going to be 21,000 micrometers. And so our magnification is going to be twi 21,000 divided by 60, both in micrometers, and that should be a magnification of calculator 21,000 divided by 60 equals 350. And I seem to remember that that's correct. Okay, so you see the process. Okay, it's process. So you work on your process and your answers will automatically improve. Okay, so let's move on. So this is, in this last example, we have um, something to do with the graticule. Um, and so question reads, so we, we have to kind of imagine that we are looking down a microscope in this question. Looking down the microscope, our eyepiece has a graticule on it. It goes from zero to 30 with no units, because remember, graticules don't have units. They are simply divisions, okay? The units are assigned when we have some way to calibrate them. Okay, so we have a transverse section of a stem of a typical pond weed using a times 10 objective lens. Okay, that's, that's not by itself anything that we can do something with. Part of a graticule is shown below the stem, okay? And the markings on the graticule are 0.1 millimeters apart. So presumably this person, before they looked at this stem, they had a stage micrometer. And they put the stage micrometer next to the graticule um, visually, and they determined that each of the divisions, so each of these divisions right here, each of these divisions, I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing, each of these divisions right here is 0.1 millimeters. Okay, so the question reads, measure the, oops, measure the width of the stem between points A and B. Give your answer to the nearest 0.1 millimeters. So what I've done here is I've simply drawn straight lines down from the graticule because we know that each of these division is 0.1. So that's 0.1, that's 0.1, and you get the idea. Okay, so all we have to do really is see how many graticule divisions correspond to the width of the stem between points A and B, and roughly speaking, we have one, two, but I'm going to cut a long story short there and say it's 17 and a half. Okay, so you can do that for yourself also. 
So we have 17.5 divisions on the Grattan cube that correspond to the width of the stem. We know that each division is 0.1 millimeters. Okay? So what we have to do is say, right, 17.5 multiplied by 0.1 millimeters should give us the total width. Um, and so that should be 1.75 millimeters. Okay? And it's saying give it to the nearest 0.1, so I'll call it 1.8 millimeters. Okay, I think that's slightly off from the mark scheme, but there we have it. Okay, um, I hope that's making sense. So the next part of the question is calculate the magnification of the image. Now, what we have to ask ourselves is: is that possible? We draw ourselves a little uh, formula triangle where we have the image, um, the actual, and the magnification. Now, do we have an actual? I think we just calculated that, so that's fine. Um, do we have a magnification? No, we've been asked to calculate it. Do we have an image? We have an image and we have a ruler. Okay, so our actual is 1.8 millimeters. And the next thing we're going to do is use our ruler and measure the distance between A and B and for simplicity's sake, we'll call it nine centimeters, quickly converted to 90 millimeters. So our image is 90 millimeters. So we double check that, okay. So the distance between those two points using a ruler, therefore corresponding to image, is 90 millimeters. Our actual is 1.8. So if we have our image and we have our actual and they are in the same units, we can now go ahead and calculate the magnification and that will be 90 divided by 1.8 and the answer should be 1.850. Okay, or magnification, so 50x or 50 times, however you want to do that. Okay, guys, and that is that. Um, there are no further questions. So uh, if you do have questions, you, you can comment on the video afterwards so I can address that in future episodes. Um, as you have seen from today, nothing is going to stop me from coming here and doing this. So I will be here tomorrow. Hopefully I've sorted out whatever stream issues there are. Um, uh, what was there also? Right, so tomorrow, tomorrow we are going to look at organelles. We're going to start looking at organelles, uh, their structures and functions. Um, I'm going to try and leave no part of the specification uncovered. So please tune in. Um, if you don't get to watch this live, that's fine. If you don't really have any specific questions, there's probably not any point in watching it live. You can just watch it afterwards. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for doing your small part in keeping this world turning, ladies and gents. Okay. And if if these recent events teach us anything, is that we do need more people on the planet with brains and you know with biological knowledge. Okay. And I'm relying on you guys to essentially save the future, right? Because we don't need these kind of shenanigans again, okay? Um, okay, guys, so I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Leave any feedback. If you've got questions on what we've discussed today, put them in the comment section, and I will see you tomorrow.